Okay, how you doing? Uh, we're going to talk about here uh, two triangles, and we're just going to ask the question of what can be concluded about these two triangles. So, basically, what I want to do is I want to compare the two. Now, in geometry, we're kind of looking for two main things: are they similar, or are they exactly the same triangle, which means congruent? So, what we're going to do here is we're going to go through some steps um, to talk about how how we can draw a conclusion. So here we go. First thing first, there's a couple theorems you need to know about. So things we don't want to have to go through and prove, they've already been proven for us. And what we want to simply do is we want to just try to prove one of these. So if I want to try to prove that triangles are congruent, here's my theorems. So I need to prove that I have a side, angle, side, and in that order I must prove that the angles are equal and that the sides that correspond have a proportion of one. If I'm just looking to prove that they are similar, then I need side angle side, side side side, or angle angle similarity. I must prove that the angles are equal and that the corresponding sides must be proportionate. They don't have to be to one, they just have to be proportionate, which means their ratios must simplify to the same thing. So here we go, we're going to go ahead and get started. So first things first, what I'm going to notice here is that I have two angles in each of these triangles. And what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to try to make some conclusions. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight simply what is given to me. So if I'm going to go ahead and do this, I'm going to do something called a flow chart to help me do this. So the first thing I want to do is just simply highlight the given. The given information that I know when I look at these triangles is that I know that angle T equals 88 degrees. I know angle S is equal to 43 degrees. Okay. The next thing I know is that angle M is now equivalent to 43 degrees. And I know angle L is equal to 49 degrees. The one last thing that I do know in here, because I have a congruency mark, a slash going through a segment, and the slash going through the segment, that I know segment LN is equal to segment RT. And that's going to prove to be important when we go ahead and do this. So this is the, the given. So all I'm going to do is label it as the given. I'm just going to circle it really quick into like a bubble. And I'm going to label this as my given information. Now what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to look for similarity first. So what I'm going to look to try to prove here is that I either I have two sides, okay, so based off this given information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it and go, do I have enough information from these triangles or can I go over here and look at these triangles and, ha and be able to label two sides to set up a proportion? And if I don't, then side angle sides out the window and there's nothing I can do. So if I come over here because I'm not given any measures, there's nothing I can really do other than say that that side equals that. So it doesn't give me enough information to use side angle side because I'd have to know information about two sides or I'd have to be able to look at the triangle and develop information from them about two sides. Since I don't have anything that I can work off of or build from because I have two separate triangles that aren't really connected, there's nothing I can do. So since I don't have two sides, then that throws the three sides out the window as well. So what I'm going to look for is I have angle, angle. So all I need to prove is that two angles are equal. If I can prove two angles are equal and that they correspond, that I can then say that they're similar. And this is important because for me to say something is congruent, they have to be similar first. So the first thing I'm going to do is to see, can I say these are similar? And then I'm going to check even farther to say, okay, can I say that congruency exists? So, what I have here is I've got one measure of 88, one measure of 43. Before I even begin to look at this triangle over here, I'm going to calculate the measure of angle R. So the way I calculate the measure of angle R, R is going to be using the triangle sum theorem, which is add these two together, okay, and add that side, they must equal 180. So if I subtract these both from 180, which is 88 and 43, I'll figure out a measure of angle R. 
So 180 degrees minus 88 minus 43. And what I have there is that angle R measures 49 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and label that 49 degrees. So what I now have is that based off of this information, I now know that I have two pairs of equal measured angles. So the next thing I need to be important of is I'm going to talk about this idea of labeling the triangle per, um, so that I had to figure out are they corresponding because this one's 88 so I have to make sure that this one's 88 as well so if you have here you notice I have 43 and 49 well, if I add those two together we've already calculated that 88 so the measure of angle N is 88 degrees now I'm labeling them in red for a reason because they are calculated measures they weren't given to me so when I look at this flow chart over here what I now have is extra information and this extra information I have I'm gonna put into another bubble this other bubble that I'm gonna have here is that I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna say some other things a little bit later but based off of this given information there is a couple things that I can say one thing I can say okay is that I can say that angle M equals angle S. So angle M equals angle S. And the reason I can say that angle M equals angle S is because they are equal measures. Okay? The next thing I can go ahead and say is I can go ahead and say over here, okay, that N, LN, segment LN, divided by RT is going to equal 1. And the reason I can say that over here, sorry, is that lengths of same measure are equivalent. And since I have the same, the same side length divided by the same side length, then that equals 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. So, what I now have here is kind of this thing where I've got this angle that I'm kind of dealing with, and I've got this side that I'm kind of dealing with. So, this goes back to I've got a side and an angle. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to look back up here at my theorems and go, okay, I've got a side, angle, side, and I've got the side, 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 and I've got this angle, angle. So, the question is, is that is this going to play a role in anything that I do? And we'll have to see and find out. So, the next thing I want to take a look at is that this bubble is going to be what I call my calculated bubble or my finding bubble. And what I've come to find here is that angle R, okay, is equivalent to angle L. And the reason for that, again, is because they are equal measures. Okay? So because of that, I now have two angles that are equal measure. So what I can now say is that these triangles are similar, but I don't want to end my proof there. What I want to check here is that are they proportionate? So I don't have anything over here to set up a proportion, but what I do have is that I know that the proportion of these sides is equal to one, and because they're similar triangles, then that means the rest of these are going to be proportionate. So. T over S is going to have to have the same proportion that RT over LN had because I've just proven that they are similar. So, what this allows me to say is that segment LM divided by segment RS equal 1, that this entire, or both of these triangles have a proportion of 1. Now that's important because this comes back to my congruency theorems. And my congruency theorems are, if I have two angles that are equal and a side that is a proportion of 1, Okay, or my size of a proportion of 1, that I can go ahead and say they're congruent. So when I go ahead and look at my triangle, I have angle M and angle L, so angle, angle, then a side. When I come over here, I have angle, angle, side. So, what I've now been able to prove at this point, so I take all of these, and I link them to my last bubble, which is my final conjecture bubble. And what I'm going to conclude Okay, from all of that information, okay, is that triangle SRT 
must be congruent to triangle. Now here's the important part about all of this, you must go in a specific order. Because I want SRT, so S to R to T, I must follow the same order. So S was the 43 degree angle. So I'm going to go over here and find the 43 degree angle, which is M. I then went to the 49 and down to the 88. So I'm going to go 43, 49, 88. So triangle M, L, N. And the reason for that is just simply this angle, angle, side, congruency theorem that I have. So I have the angle, angle, side, congruency. And that's essentially how you just go ahead and you set up a little flow chart. And, and, and there's nothing more to it. The important part here is labeling your given. And what things could I say based off of my given? I could say that angle M equals angle S gave a reason. I could say that LN divided by RT was 1. And that's all I could say from this information up here. Notice I have nothing in my table about T and L. And that's simply because I couldn't make anything that had to do with 88 or 49. It's just given information. Eventually, though, what this L allowed me to do was say R equaled L because they are equal measures. And then that's my final, that's my final product there for flowcharts.